not, you know, you hear about cows being injected with hormones. Yes, cows can be injected with extra hormones, but hormones naturally are produced in milk. It's supposed to be. Milk is a growth fluid. It's supposed to make things grow. Babies grow because that's the only thing they're taking. Okay. So there's natural hormones that are coming inherent to the mom, whatever species she is, that's coming out through the milk, whether she's injected with extra hormones or not. Okay. So progestins, estrogens, other hormones. Welcome to Veggie Doctor Radio. I am your host, Dr. Yami, board certified pediatrician, certified lifestyle medicine physician, certified health and wellness coach, author, speaker, mother, wife, and human being. I passionately believe in the power of diet, habits, and mindset in sparking and sustaining well being and joy in our lives. This podcast combines expert interviews and thoughtful monologues to explore plant-based nutrition, lifestyle medicine, parenting, mindset, and other exciting and fun topics. I hope that these episodes inspire you, uplift you, and equip you with the knowledge and tools to live your best life. Are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Hey, veggie lovers, welcome back to Veggie Doctor Radio. So today I am going to be re-releasing an episode that first aired in May of 2020. But today it's even more relevant because today is International Plant Milk Day. Awesome. And even compared to last year, the market for plant milks is exploding. So I mentioned in the podcast episode last year that there's over 20 commercially available plant milks. I feel like there's like a million now and there's more coming like banana milk, barley milk, all kinds of interesting plant milks that are going to be coming out. Uh, Sunflower seeds. I had discovered one called Not Milk. Now it's not unsweetened, it is fortified, but I was blown away at how similarly it tasted to whole milk to me. I couldn't believe it. It has just a very slight aftertaste of coconut, which doesn't bother me because I like that flavor. For those that can't stand the coconut flavor, you probably won't like it still, but if you're looking for something to replicate the flavor of milk, check that one out. Like I said, it's not unsweetened, but you know, It might be what you're looking for if you're having trouble ditching milk. What's interesting is that even though currently the plant milk segment only attributes about 14% of all the purchases of milk in our country, it is rapidly growing. Currently, milk alternatives market in the US is 2.4 billion, I did read another stat that was double that, like 4 billion. And then something else that said by 2030, it's going to be 62 billion in value, the plant milk market, amazing. So if you're an entrepreneur, innovator, you wanna jump on making some other form of plant milk from something we haven't made before, now is the time. There's plenty available, even in my small town, so many different options. If you have been curious about replacing dairy in your diet, just go to your store and see what's available. But listen to this episode first. I do have a freebie. If you go to dryami.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-Y-A-M-I.com forward slash dairy free altogether, you can download a freebie that walks you through all the different areas where you could replace dairy. It has recipes, it has suggestions. It's a great way to get started. Even if you're not ready to ditch a dairy 100%, remember it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can start with the milk because there's so many options. They're so creamy, they're so delicious. You probably will even like it better than cow's milk. And when it comes to ice cream, 
I assure you that you're not gonna be missing a thing. You are not going to feel deprived. There's ice cream made out of cashew milk, oat milk, rice milk, soy milk, everything. It's, it's available to you, it's got plenty of sugar and delightful things. So don't worry, you're not going to feel deprived. I hope that you enjoy listening to this episode. If you've already listened to it before, it's gonna be a nice refresher. You might take away something new, but here it is. These are ways that you can replace dairy in your diet and veggie lovers, happy International Plant Milk Day. I hope that you have a very plantastic day. I'm gonna talk about replacing dairy in our diet tonight. This is a hot topic for people. This is usually the first thing that people say whenever they hear about a plant-based diet or a vegan diet, but I could never live without cheese or could never live without ice cream. Well, guess what? You don't have to. It can be amazing. So let's talk about it. Are you ready? I have my notes here. Okay, so I did some research and looked up some data, and Americans consume a lot of dairy. In fact, according to the USDA in 2018, you ready for this? Americans consumed 646 pounds of dairy per person per year. 646 pounds in a year, every person, which is 107 more pounds per person compared to 1975. Do you know how people are always saying stuff like, well, we're just eating more sugar now, or, you know, those people that are like against fat, we're eating more fat now, we're eating more everything now. 107 more pounds of dairy per person compared to 1975. And that wasn't even that long ago. I'm sure if we go back to like 1950, 1920, it would be ridiculous. So how is that broken down? For fluid milk, 146 pounds per person per year. In cheese, 40 pounds of cheese per person per year. 13 pounds of yogurt, six pounds of butter. That was probably me before I went vegan and 18 pounds of ice cream. So we really like our cheese, we really like our ice cream, we really like our cow's milk dairy a lot. Why do we love it so much? Well, I think it's natural. It's natural to love milk because as babies, that's how we grow. We grow by drinking milk. What's in milk? Fat, sugar, growth hormones, a lot of different growth hormones, proteins, okay? But it's especially for human milk, it's a lot of fat and sugar. But we're definitely not the highest fat percentage of species. Each species, each mammalian species has a different uh, percentage of these components, okay? So I just looked it up just because it's fun. And my kids and I love watching nature shows. So we love learning about all different kinds of animals and how they all have really different lives than us. The fattiest milk on the planet comes from the hooded seal. So just for comparison, human babies, the milk for human babies is about three to 5% fat. For the hooded seal, it is 60% fat. That's really important because hooded seals only nurse for four days before they're weaned and they drink 16 pounds of milk per day each day before they're weaned. So they need that. They need all that energy because it's really cold in the water and they need to have all those calories. So it, fat is the densest source of calories. We're wired in our brains to want fat because to us, fat equals survival, okay? So human milk has about three to 5% fat, but we drink a lot of cow's milk. And cow's milk has more fat, more protein, a lot more growth hormones, because why? Baby cows are bigger than humans, and they have to grow bigger and faster than humans do. Um, the lowest milk fat 
in any mammalian milk is from the black rhino who only has 0.2% fat, but they nurse their babies for two years before they wean them. So milk is a really good thing. Like it's good for babies to have milk. All mammals give their babies milk. And that's a good thing because it helps them survive. It gives them calories. It gives them energy. And we're wired to like it. So it's beneficial for us. And it's good for us to have it. But when we're weaned from our mother's milk, it has less benefit after that, and especially if we're drinking the milk of another species. So that's why we like it. Milk is high in fat, it's high in sugar, it's delicious, it equals survival to us because it's a source of calories and it's a easily absorbable source of calories, especially when we're babies. So I just want you to know why we like it. There's a reason why we like that. Um, but the reason we like the kind of things that we do is because it's high in fat and high in sugar, especially like cheese is really high in fat, ice cream really high in fat and sugar. So don't fool yourself by thinking you're drinking milk or you're eating milk products because of the protein, okay? Yes, it does have protein, but that's not why you like it. You like it because it's got fat and it's got sugar. You don't see people running around addicted to like low fat and fat free cheese or skim milk. That's not that's not what we're having issues with. We're having issues with cheese, the regular fat kind, and ice cream and those kinds of things. Okay. So that's why. Why would we want to consider decreasing or eliminating dairy from our lives? So there is a lot of reasons for that. We have been seduced in this country and some other countries too by the purported benefits of milk. You know, a lot of people uh, grew up thinking that milk does the body good and that it helps create strong bones and that it's really essential for us. That's what we believed. I believe that. As a pediatrician, I believe that. I was taught that. I was a milk pusher. If any of my patients are listening or watching or families, there was a time in my career where I did. I said, Two to three servings of dairy per day, it's very important. This is what I believed until I started seeing with my own eyes the damaging effects of dairy. But now we have evidence. So it's not just me having anecdotal experience as a pediatrician that it's causing harm to my patients because it definitely is, but now there's evidence. So I love a recent review article released in the New England Journal of Medicine, co-authored from two physicians from Harvard, Dr. Walter Willett and Dr. David Ludwig. It's entitled Milk and Health. So they quote the last two sentences of the abstract. They say, the health benefit of a high intake of milk products has not been established and concerns exist about the risks of possible adverse health outcomes. Therefore, the role of dairy consumption in human nutrition and disease prevention warrants careful assessment. Meaning we need to rethink our relationship. We need to rethink our love affair with dairy. We used to think all these things about it, but it doesn't. So what did they found? They find in this review article. They looked at lots of different studies and they were able to summarize them in this article. So what did they find? What are the potential risks of cow's milk consumption? Increased intake of IGF-1, which can increase our cancer. So IGF-1 is a growth hormone. We do need some, we don't want extra. Extra growth hormone does not do good things to our body, okay? Increased exposure to progestins estrogens, and other hormones. This is not, you know, you hear about cows being injected with hormones. Yes, cows can be injected with extra hormones, but hormones naturally are produced in milk. It's supposed to be. Milk is a growth fluid. It's supposed to make things grow. Babies grow because that's the only thing they're taking. Okay. So there's natural hormones that are coming inherent to the mom whatever species she is, that's coming out through the milk, whether she's injected with extra hormones or not, okay? So progestins, estrogens, other hormones. And now for a very important message. 
Hey veggie lover, if you are looking for free resources to guide you on your plant-based and healthy living journey, go to dryami.com forward slash free for tons of free downloadable PDFs. Hundreds of people have taken advantage of my tips to help them reduce meat and dairy consumption, navigate eating out, and build satisfying plant-based meals. Download one or download them all. And don't forget to share with friends and family. DrYami.com forward slash free. And now back to the episode. Exposure to infections present in milk. Thankfully, milk is pasteurized in the United States, but some people want to consume raw milk. And there's definitely viruses and bacteria and other things that come from the mom itself, from the inside of her body, and are transmitted through the milk. And we now have evidence that those viruses, bovine viruses is what they're called, are associated with certain diseases, may even trigger type 1 diabetes. There's research on this. Look it up. Increased risk of cardiovascular disease because the fat in milk is saturated fat. It's probably okay to have it when you're a baby because that's what you're eating, that's what you're meant to do. But when you're an adult and you're having it three times a day over and over and over again, this saturated fat is damaging the lining of our blood vessels. Increased risk of type 2 diabetes, increased prostate cancer risk, increased endometrial cancer risk, cow's milk protein allergy, which affects 4% of babies. Four out of 100 babies are going to have cow's milk protein allergy, some so bad that they have bleeding in their stool. Atopic diseases, that means eczema and asthma can be worsened by dairy. Increased total mortality rate, So for those people that are consuming dairy, compared to people that do not consume dairy and eat a plant-based diet, those that consume dairy have an increased total mortality risk. And last but not least, five to 10 times increase in greenhouse gas emissions compared to plants. That's the stuff that they talked about in the review article. So, you know, those are the things that they reviewed, but also the things that I see in my practice, which is very common, lactose intolerance, which may affect up to 75% of the world's population. Some ethnic groups, up to 90% of people are going to be lactose intolerance, which causes flatulence, diarrhea, abdominal pain, sometimes even vomiting, bloating, those kinds of things. And it happens because we lose lactase, which is the enzyme that helps break down the sugar lactose so that we are born with lactase when we're babies because we there's lactose also in human milk. So we need that. But as we grow older, especially when we're above the age of three, we start losing that lactase. And so we can't break it down anymore. So it causes some problems. A lot of people don't even realize they have it, that they have lactose intolerance and they just feel bad all the time. and They just think it's normal until they stop consuming dairy. And they're like, wow, I feel awesome now. (laughs) So just one of those things to know, it's very common. And the older you are, the more likely that you are going to develop lactose intolerance. Um, And then of course, constipation, chronic abdominal pain, acne, menstrual pain, menstrual dysregulation, all kinds of things that I see associated with dairy. Okay, before I start talking about how to replace dairy in your diet, I just want you to get excited and know that there's so many options, okay? Like you have so many options. This is probably one of the easiest things to replace. I already did the meat replacement video and podcast for you guys. So you can go back and listen to that one if you want to learn how to replace meat, but dairy is even easier now, okay? But there's other podcast episodes that I want you to look into if you want to learn more about the adverse consequences of dairy. Episode number 90 with a plant-based GI doctor, Dr. Marielle von Lanthan. We talk about constipation and inflammatory bowel disease, and she talks about her opinion on milk. Episode 81 with Dr. Jackie Bussey is amazing. Evidence-based risks of drinking milk. It's a great episode very comprehensive. I've recommended it to a lot of my parents. Episode number 80, Going Dairy-Free with Olympian Dotsy Bausch from Switch for Good. Episode 73, Plant-Based Pregnancy and Raising Plant-Based Kids with dietitian Alex Caspero, and we do touch upon milk there. And episode 41 with Dr. Angie Sadegi, who is also a plant-based GI doc, why she cut dairy out of her diet and the benefits she got. So check out those episodes as well if you want to learn more. 
Okay, so great news. It's really easy to replace it, becoming increasingly more easy. Even in small towns like mine, there's plenty of options. So I just wanna go over some of the things so you can start thinking about it. Open your mind to all of the possibilities. Okay, first of all, milk, fluid milk. Whether you want to drink it by the glass or you wanna use it in recipes and smoothies and all of those things, easiest thing. There are currently 20 different plant-based milks that are commercially produced, 20, okay? That is a lot of options. But the most popular are soy, almond, coconut, oat, rice, hemp, and pea. They can be made from, and this pea protein, like, like, a, like a sweet pea, not pea like your urine, okay? <laughs> Sorry, if that's confusing to anybody. Okay, so milk can be made from beans, grains, nuts, and seeds. And plant milks have actually been consumed for centuries. In fact, the term milk was used to describe plant milks since the 13th century, guys. This is not a new thing. This is not like a new age thing. In fact, a lot of the meat replacements, like I talked about last time, they've been around for a long time. So don't feel like, ew, this is weird, this is gross. No, we've been doing this for a while, okay? Just try it, open up your mind. There's actually 36 different plants that can be used to make milk, but only 20 that are produced commercially. And the good news is most of the time, most even small towns, you can find a lot of different plant-based milks at your grocery store. And there's lots of different ones to try. You can replace them one to one when it comes to recipes. So if there's a pancake recipe or something like that that calls for milk, one to one. So one cup of cow's milk, one cup of almond, oat, hemp, whatever kind of milk you're using, you don't have to do any kind of, you know, different conversion for that. And you can make your own milk too, because some of them can be expensive. And, you know, why not save money? I like to save time in the kitchen. So I just wanted to give you a quick little tip. There are a few that you can make without needing to strain if you have a high speed blender. So what are those? Cashew, hemp, pumpkin, and sunflower. So those with a high speed blender, make sure that you're having it, you're using the raw version, mixing it with water, and you don't need to strain it afterwards. So the recipe that I give for easy nut milk, one cup of raw nuts or seeds, cashew, sunflower, hemp, uh, pumpkin, soaked at least four hours or overnight, combined with three cups of water, a little more, a little less, depending on how thin or thick you like it, a dash of salt, maple syrup if you want, vanilla extract if you want, and blend that up until it's thick and creamy. May take a, a couple of minutes to completely blend it. And you know, preferably if you have a high speed blender, this works a lot better. And then you can use it right away. You can use it in your recipes. You can drink it. You, and that's why adding a little salt, a little maple syrup might help some people that want to drink it that way. But you can start using it right away. That's really easy. And now for a very important message. Hey, mama, if you are feeling frustrated about mealtime battles, worried that your child isn't eating enough or eating enough vegetables, afraid that your child is going to get some awful deficiency or disease because of the lack of diversity in their diet, I wrote a book that might be for you. A Parent's Guide to Intuitive Eating, How to Raise Kids Who Love to Eat Healthy is available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook through all major online booksellers. Did you know that most children are born with the innate ability to eat the appropriate amount of food to satisfy their hunger and support appropriate growth? Despite this, parents are still anxious and confused about how much and what to feed their children. In addition, many children are labeled as picky eaters or develop behaviors such as hiding and sneaking food. There's also a growing epidemic of dieting behaviors and eating disorders beginning at alarmingly young ages. In my book, you'll learn the five pillars of healthy eating, how to apply intuitive eating through all the stages of development, lifestyle habits that support healthy eating and body image, troubleshooting and problem solving for picky eaters, overeating and dieting behaviors, how to create and foster a healthy body image in your children, 
how exploring your own body image and relationship with food will help raise an intuitive eater, and what foods to offer your child at different stages of development. A Parent's Guide to Intuitive Eating, How to Raise Kids Who Love to Eat Healthy, available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook through all major online booksellers. Are you ready for a fresh approach to feeding your child? For more information, visit dryami.com forward slash book. And now back to the episode. In there's going to be a download for this. So in the download, I'm going to provide these recipes as well as links to other. So homemade nut milk, homemade oat milks. Uh, you can just get like a little cheesecloth. And then you can strain some of them so that they're they're not going to be gritty for you. So there's all kinds of options for that. Okay, let's talk about cream. So where do we use cream? Cream is very thick. It's really high in fat. And it gives a rich, creamy texture to foods. So we encounter them in savory foods as well as in sweet foods. And it's really nice. It gives us a good mouthfeel. It's a really delicious thing to have. So There's definitely commercially produced products out there that you can buy some even half and half like plant based half and half made from cashew and coconut and things like that. But you can also make it yourself. So what foods can we use to replicate cream cashews, coconut milk, the canned kind or coconut cream, silken tofu, potato, cauliflower, chickpeas and aquafaba. Have you heard of aquafaba before? It's cool. Aquafaba is actually chickpea juice. And what works best is the chickpea juice from canned chickpeas. So you're going to use the chickpeas for some kind of recipe, drain off the liquid, and you can whip that. It's amazing. So these ingredients can all be used to make creamy, to have that creamy texture and feel that you want in your food. So in the handout, I'll have recipes for cashew cream coconut whipped cream, tofu sour cream, aquafaba whip, and homemade coffee creamers. Because I know some of you like to drink coffee, and there's all kinds of different recipes you can use for that. Okay, butter. Let's talk about butter. I love butter. I'm telling you, I love butter. Butter is delicious because it's 100% fat. 100% fat. Okay, (laughs) so in order to replicate butter without using animals, you have to use oils. So there's lots of delicious options, but just a caution that they is 100 percent fat. So you don't want to use these as excess for health reasons. But, you know, they're really delicious. So commercially produced products, uh, Earth Balance, which is my favorite, Smart Balance, Country Croc. I can't believe it's not butter vegan. Miyoko's, which is delicious. It's a cultured butter. Pure blends, simple truth. Wayfair actually has a really nice one that actually uses beans in it too. So it's a little bit lighter, but I really like that one. And melt. Just make sure that whatever you're using is non-hydrogenated because the hydrogenated oils definitely have more health risks. And you can also use whole foods too, like avocados uh, to replicate that buttery. It's not going to be quite the same as butter, but to have a buttery feel on your toast, depending on what you're using it for. Okay, so butter, you just go to the store and find a vegan butter. Even in small towns, there's going to be some vegan options now because we got the country crock and we got the smart balance and I can't believe it's not butter. So you'll be able to find it. And you can use those in recipes and on your toast and however butter is called for. Yogurt. Yogurt is definitely one of those things that we're getting every day. I feel like new products. There's lots available commercially, but I have an amazing recipe for vegan Greek yogurt that I developed after I got back from Greece this past summer because, oh my God, the yogurt there, the Greek yogurt is literally so thick that you could turn it upside down. Nothing's going to happen. And you can put a spoon in it. It just stands up like it's thick. So I was able to create a plant-based yogurt that is amazing. Okay, so what do they make commercially produced yogurts from? Soy, coconut, almonds, cashews, flax, oat, peas. And there's even a plant-based yogurt company that I found when I was doing research. It's called Lava, L-A-V-V-A. That actually I think is a subscription service 
And it has really interesting ingredients. It's all whole foods, no additives. And they even have plantain as one of the uh, ingredients in there. So that was really cool. Really quickly, if you have an Instant Pot and you want to try my Instant Pot Vegan Greek Yogurt, I said this is going to be in the free download. Two cups of raw cashews soaked overnight and drained, one can of full fat coconut milk, and one packet of vegan yogurt starter or some of your vegan yogurt. You can use it as a starter. Blend all of that together, put it in your jars for the Instant Pot, put it on 14 hours and you are good to go. After that, you put it in the fridge for a few hours and that stuff is amazing. A little goes a long way because it is rich, but I use about a tablespoon in my overnight oats. You can also put it in your smoothies. It's so amazing. You can also make soy yogurt, similar recipe with just soy milk and no additives. Not gonna be as thick as a Greek yogurt, but you're definitely gonna have the benefit of the probiotics in there and it's you know nice, flavor. You don't have to put sweetener in it unless you, unless you want to. All right. So let's talk about cheese because this is everybody's hang up. Okay. So there has been an explosion of commercially produced cheese alternatives on the market. Definitely at the beginning of the cheese, the vegan cheese products, they weren't that great. And they definitely don't taste the same as cow's milk cheese, but now there's some amazing products. So what are some brands? Miyoko's, um, Daya, Chow Cheese from Field Roast, Follow Your Heart, Kite Hill, Treeline, Vramage with the V, Violife, and So Delicious. My favorite sliced cheese is the Field Roast Chow Cheese Creamy Original. It's amazing. Goes great on sandwiches, melts really well. And then there's some like the Miyoko's that appeal to like people that want the fancy cheese, like their cheese and crackers and wine thing. So there's something for everybody, but just know that cheese is a high fat product because cheese inherently is like this. So when you try to replicate cheese, it's gonna be really high in fat. So a little goes a long way, be mindful of how much you're eating, but there's plenty out there to enjoy. So don't feel like you're gonna be deprived. And some of these, you can actually order them. Like Miyoko's, you can order them, they send it to you on ice. So it doesn't even have to be available in your town. However, if you don't want to buy commercial processed stuff, you can replicate cheese using whole foods. You can use tofu to make ricotta. You can use cashews to make cream cheese. You can use cashews to make mozzarella. You can even replicate cottage cheese. And I want to give you uh, one recipe for Parmesan that's so easy that I can just say it. Half a cup of raw walnuts, half a cup of raw sunflower seeds, half a cup of raw almonds, and half a cup of nutritional yeast flakes, one teaspoon of salt, whiz that all together in your blender until it's powdery. It is so amazing. You're not gonna believe it. It is yummier. It's better than Parmesan actually, but it has that salty, yummy flavor. And the nutritional yeast gives it that kind of cheesy flavor that you're after. I also have two recipes for cheese sauces, a low fat one and one based on cashews that will be in the download. I love them both, they're great. Um, and I usually have one of these sauces in my fridge at all times, because I like putting it in my bowls and all kinds of things, my salads, it's really yummy. Okay, so last item, ice cream. Don't worry, you will not be deprived. I think that the plant-based ice creams are actually better than cow's milk ice cream. They are so rich. So just know, Ice cream is high in fat, high in sugar. That's what makes it delicious. And whenever you freeze things, actually you need even more sugar in it to be able to taste the sugar. So just know that it's really high in sugar. Like if you melt ice cream and try to drink it, it's gonna be sickeningly sweet, okay? But it's one of America's top five favorite foods is ice cream. So what can you make ice cream out of in the plant world? Soy, rice, coconut, cashews, oats, I even had chickpea ice cream. If you follow me on social media, you can look back on my Instagram or Facebook when I went to a shop in Portland called Little Chickpea. That ice cream was amazing. I had the cookies and cream. Okay, I'm just gonna confess this, okay? We ate there three nights in a row, okay? We don't have those kinds of things here in Yakima. So when we went to Portland, every night we were all kind of embarrassed, but we'd be like looking at each other after dinner and be like, 
uh, do you want to go get some more of that ice cream and be like, yeah, do you? And so we'd go, but you know, that's an every once in a while thing. And now we haven't gone to Portland in so many months and I'm so sad, but there's all kinds of options. However, if you don't want to go the high fat, high sugar kind, there's something called banana nice cream. It's amazing. So you get frozen bananas, you put it in your blender with a little bit of a splash of plant-based milk if you need it, a dash of salt if you want it, and you're able to make soft serve ice cream out of frozen bananas. Try it, it's so good. You can put some cocoa powder in there, you can put some peanut butter in there, you can put some frozen blueberries afterwards and mix it all in. And this is definitely one of those foods that's refreshing and satisfying, but you're not gonna have that heavy after eating feeling like, ugh, I just ate a bunch of fat and sugar and it's not feeling good in my tummy. I'm also going to be including the link to uh, Chocolate Covered Katie, her website. She has banana ice cream variations. And then my very favorite homemade ice cream that you use and put in an ice cream maker is from a book called Veganomicon, which I first got when I first went vegan. It by far has the best ice cream recipe. I use it every summer to make lavender ice cream, homemade, plant-based lavender ice cream. It's such a big hit. It turns out great. So I can't give you that recipe, but I do link to 13 amazing vegan ice cream recipes that you can check out. But if you really are a big ice cream person and you like gourmet cooking, check out that book, Veganomicon. It's like vegan food Bible. It's really great. Okay. So that is all that I wanted to say about dairy, you don't have to worry, just explore and keep an open mind. Just two comments. So Kristen Childsmore says, my daughter has an allergy to milk. So she said that she had bleeding when she was two weeks old. I had to be dairy free for her to stop bleeding and it took two months. Yeah, so sometimes also babies that are sensitive to dairy will also be sensitive to soy. So sometimes we have to stop both dairy and soy and have to be really strict. Some babies are ultra sensitive. So even if you have a little coffee creamer, a splash of coffee creamer, it can definitely um, cause issues. And Tiffany Wilkerson wants to know, where can we find the download? It's not available yet because I usually do the Facebook Live and then I give all my materials to Alejandra who makes it all pretty and gets it all ready and then it'll be available next week. I will post it here on Facebook, so keep an eye out for it. And it'll also be available on my website, dryami.com, under the free tab. I'll have lots of free goodies there now. So if you wanna check out what I have, the meat replacement guide, the zero waste guide, the shopping list, all of those things there. Thank you guys so much for being here and for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this and that it gave you some ideas and that it made you a little bit less fearful about replacing dairy and maybe even going completely dairy free. You can do it. It's a beautiful way to live. So what is the name of the book? Oh, Veganomicon. V-E-G-A-N-I-C-O-M. Veganomicon. No, Veganomicon. N. <laughs> so just look it up. It's by Isha, Isha Chandra Moskowitz and her friend, which I can't remember the name, but just look it up. It's like, it'll be right on Amazon Veganomicon. All right, guys, have a nice evening and I will see you back here next week. Hey, veggie lover. I hope that you loved today's episode. Will you take a second and do me a huge favor? Please subscribe to my podcast so that you never miss an episode. You're the reason I'm here and I wanna share it all with you. Thank you for listening and have a plantastic day.